Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. National Drinking Water Week is May 4th through the 10th. In honor of this, Channel 2 will air a fun, original kids program called Dr. H2O. That's every day right here after this Weekly Report. Dr. H2O is a superhero of science, teaching children fun and important lessons about water pollution, water quality science, Kansas City's water filtration process, and more. So gather your kids and watch Dr. H2O immediately following this weekly report right here on this station. Kansas City's Streetcar Authority has recommended Herzog Transit Services to operate and maintain the Kansas City Downtown Streetcar Starter Line. Herzog is located in St. Joseph, Missouri. It operates streetcar and rail systems nationwide, including systems in Los Angeles, Austin, and San Francisco. For more information, visit kcstreetcar.org. The city has partnered with Kansas City Community Gardens to announce a new program that will help local urban farmers and community gardeners get water to their plots. Called KC Grow, this program will conduct water audits on local farms and community gardens to determine their water needs and best water conservation practices. Then the city will provide small grants to help participants implement those actions. For more information, visit kcmo.gov and search for KC Grow. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Spring is in full swing and KC Parks has many fun events and activities for you to take full advantage of the season. All aboard on Saturday, May 10th for a National Train Day celebration at the Kansas City Northern Miniature Railroad in Frank Vedic Park. The fun begins at 10 a.m. with live music by Rock and Rob, face painting, free train rides, giant inflatable trains, and more. Visit caseyparks.org for all the details. Buy a 2014 season pass to the Bay Water Park or the Springs Aquatic Center by May 15th and save. Purchase your season pass this spring and you will enjoy all of that water park's amenities for less than a dollar a day this summer. This offer ends before summer begins. Visit caseyparks.org to purchase your pass today. And remember, coming to the Bay Water Park this summer is our new surf simulator, the Bay Rider. Catch a wave and try this new attraction that's becoming all the rage. Ride the Fountains is coming Sunday, June 15th. Be sure to sign up for this annual bicycle tour to make sure you get a pair of commemorative cycling socks. This year's ride around the city's beautiful fountains and historic landmarks begins at 8 a.m. at Union Station. Plan to hang out following the ride for a festive party featuring live music, food, a photo booth, and more. Register now at RideTheFountains.com. To learn about other parks and recreation events, visit the department's website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. You're kind-hearted. You want to do the right thing. When it comes to helping those less fortunate, there are times you doing an act of kindness may simply perpetuate a problem and make it worse. Watch this.
it really is more effective to give resources to agencies that are organized, coordinated, and work directly with folks than to hand it to them because one just doesn't know what one's supporting or where that money is actually going to end up. For all of us who receive support for helping the homeless in our community, uh, we're scrutinized uh, by any number of organizations, both private and public. And that's, I think, is what your impact is so much greater uh, going through through that format. And there's so many, such a diversity of organizations out that you can pick that one that's working in the way in which you know you feel the most comfortable. Uh, and I think what folks don't understand is you really can be enabling people to stay in situations that are very dangerous to them, extremely dangerous to them, particularly to women, particularly to older individuals, and quite frankly, particularly to young people. And when I see a young person out in the street, and any of us who are encouraging that, we really are encouraging situations that we have no idea about, and that which have the, the most serious of ramifications. And a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, is not the solution. There are agencies that are out feeding the hungry every night of the week and they're out in vans so they go where folks are out in camps. What I see in uh, many emergency programs is quite frankly people are getting up to four or five meals. That, they're, that, that right now as opposed to being said you know why don't you get some help for your mental health issue? Why don't you get some help for substance abuse? Why don't you find housing? The, the, the entire day is caught up in moving from one free the service to another, be that just a bunk, be that uh, a food, but none of which is that sustaining uh, service that will lead someone to self-resiliency. And frankly, no one knows if an individual on the street holding a sign is what he or she represents themselves as being. We do know, quite frankly, that there is some trafficking involved, that there are individuals who take folks out, uh, drop them off at a spot, pick them up, and then get money from them, part of, kind of, part of the take. Uh, and whether those folks still are generally homeless and they're just sharing that money because they're getting the transportation to wealthier areas to get money, I don't know. But I also know that I see folks who are three, 300 yards from Restart, from City U Mission, from Hope Faith Ministries, who have their signs who are asking for things. And um, really, that is somebody who you may or may not be homeless. I've seen them teaching young people to do that. Uh, and it is counterproductive and frankly it's dangerous for both parties. If you encourage people to come to you and take something from the car, you are then uh, giving kind of a, a commitment that anybody who hands you something from a car is going to be helpful as opposed to trying to hurt you. And quite frankly, for women, for members of the LGBT community, uh, for younger people, we're putting them at risk. There is one way to solve homelessness and it's being uh, verified throughout the nation and that is to get people into housing as quickly as possible. Um, so it is not to hand things out to them, it is not even to feed them, it's to get housing. And uh, many efforts that are happening with the best of intentions are actually getting in the way of getting people into housing. If you want to truly help, Give your time or donation to one of the many local organizations whose only goal is to help the homeless men, women, and children in Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Craig Martin. I'm the general manager at Heart of America Golf Academy. And we are proud to have the first Missouri foot golf course. Uh, we are located in Swope Park, and uh, we have a, a nine hole golf course with the par three. And throughout the nine holes of that, we have an 18 hole foot golf facility. If you're wondering what foot golf is, it's essentially taking a soccer ball and kicking it into a large cup played just like golf under the same type of golf rules. Uh, they, the, the holes are run throughout the fairways and, and the rough on the golf course and we're really looking for a lot of fun for uh, kids and people that enjoy soccer and we're hoping that what this does is it brings the people that haven't really tried golf to come out to our facility, experience foot golf and then they may also enjoy playing golf down the road. We are really looking forward to and embracing the fact that we are here at Heart of America Golf Academy are going to have both wonderful golf facility and foot golf and we're just really excited for what the future holds with events that we're going to have here and some fun tournaments and just people looking to have a good time. Um, 
some of the benefits of foot golf are the exercise and health benefits that you get from it. You get a good exercise walking and, and through the 18 holes of a facility. Uh, I tried it out myself and I was a little sore the next day because you do get a, not only walking but a lot of rotary movement and exercise from kicking the ball. It's a lot more than you think it would be so it's been I can tell it's really going to be great for uh, people that want to get out and especially with families and if we're trying to get kids outdoors and get them active this is going to be a fun way especially if they don't play golf to maybe help grow the game of golf by having them come out and experience first the foot golf and then potentially down the road uh, helping to grow the game of golf. Uh, foot golf was started on the west coast and that craze has just been really nuts out there. We um, noticed the growth of that and decided how can we help bring more revenue and more people to our facility. Uh, they decided that this was something that we would try and it's very unique to this area. We'll be the only one in the Missouri area and there's only a few within the Midwest part of the, of the country. So we're really excited that that's going to be something you know dynamic for our area. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. As we looked into foot golf, we looked at the skiing industry and how the ski boarding really helped grow that sport and give them another dynamic that brought young kids and, and more people into the sport. And this is what we're planning and hoping that, that foot golf does for the game of golf and for our facility. Oh. <laughs> Come on! If you'd like to contact us about this, we will be open in the next few weeks and you can contact us at, at www.hoagolfacademy.com or by phone 816-513-8940. Thanks. So is it going with the ball? Yeah, with the flag. That's it. The first Did you get that? Out. Did you get that, Jesse? Yep. <laughs> Registered neighborhoods that have taken steps to improve the environment are encouraged to apply to be a KC Green Neighborhood. This program will award neighborhoods based on the sustainable measures they have implemented. It could be as simple as adding energy efficient upgrades or opening a community garden. Applications are due June 2nd. Neighborhoods may learn more or apply online by visiting kcmo.gov and searching for KC Green Neighborhood. Now through September, residents who live in the 64130 and 64132 zip codes can receive free licensing, free vaccinations, and free spay or neutering for their pet pit bulls and pit bull mixes. This is through the city's PetSmart Charities Grant Program. Participating vets include Spay and Neuter Kansas City, the Raytown Animal Hospital, and the Northland Animal Welfare Society. Residents must bring proof of residency to these vets in order to receive these services. The 64130 and 64132 zip codes were selected because they have an estimated 1,400 unaltered pit bulls. That is the most per capita in Kansas City. For more information, visit kcmo.gov and search PetSmart. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.